you know what? Are we live? Okay. Hello, everybody. It's 3 p.m. and it's time for dinner with Nanny Bubby. And we are outside in Nanny Bubby's garden. You know, after all, it's grow, cook, and gather. And we do a lot of cooking and a lot of gathering. But I always forget to bring you out here and to talk to you about growing and how inspired I am. My garden is really only, well, let's see, 15 months old um, from when I planted my first seed in January of 2020. And um, I am so proud of what this garden has given me. And recently I um, hired, uh, geez, I, I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of it, but they're a farming organization here locally and they have helped to teach me. So once a week I have a farmer who comes out and is teaching me because I've gotten it so far and I really need to be able to take it farther because I don't want to lose things. I planted things maybe during the wrong season last year and didn't understand why I wasn't doing so well. So I've got someone helping me now um, and so it's great. So I'm going to take you on a tour. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is all these green tomatoes. Now they got picked yesterday because the young gentleman that I have that is my farmer was letting my tomato plants go absolutely wild. And I like a more manicured garden. Um, and so, and they were also hiding the sage and the chives and the basil, and there's a strawberry plant down in there. And so I asked him to please just prune these back a little more manicured, just difference in style, right? He's a young guy. He liked things that look like a jungle, but I liked it more manicured. So these are, these came from what he cut off. And you will remember that tomatoes are one of the few fruits, because these are a fruit, that actually ripen off the vine once they've been cut. So even though these are very green, we'll just take a look at them every day and show you what they look like um, as they start to ripen and turn red. So let me take you on a tour. Um, over here is the rosemary, but this is the Italian oregano, which is just wild. It's just fantastic. And there's a place where it actually grows out of the fence. And believe it or not, I like that, but he might have cut it. And then this is Italian parsley down here. I use this all the time. And this is a uh, Armenian cucumber plant. And you are going to just love what happens. This, this Armenian cucumber plant will climb all the way up that trellis and more, probably down the other side. And those little Armenian cucumbers grow about two inches a day. So you'll see a little green one about that big. And then I don't come out for two or three days and usually they're hiding underneath the vine. And I come out about five days later, two inches a day, you have a 10 inch cucumber and the, one of the largest ones I took out last year was about 15 inches and only because I lost track of it and didn't cut it off in time. So our median cucumbers are truly my favorite. So this is the radishes and I'll tell you what, I am going, today is turkey roll-ups. So this is gonna be lots of fun. I'm gonna take this so I can cut that off. So over here is thyme. There's thyme over there as well. These are scallions, these are garbage scallions, meaning these were cut off ends that I had taken and rooted in water and then we planted them and so now they're my scallions. And Here's the sage, and I love these flowers on the sage. They're so beautiful. Basil, strawberry, more chives. These are cherry tomatoes. And these are the sweet potatoes right here. Sweet potatoes. Bell peppers. Green, yellow, red. And these are eggplant. I'm so excited. Last year, my eggplant did so well. I can hardly wait. And this is creeping thyme, which I love. It's just beautiful. Do you see that? All pink. And this is dill and fennel. And then we go back to the matching the other end. And look at this oregano growing out of the, of the wall. Isn't that great? And right in front of you, Megan, is the mint over there. 
and look at the apple tree. Can you zoom in to the apples? Yeah. Isn't that amazing, all those apples? And then over here, we have nectarines. And then you can do a tight shot on the plums right here. So I've got a tree full of plums. And then if you just whip around real quickly, either way, that's the Meyer lemon right there. Yep. Waiting to see. And this is the tangelo. And that's it. But I have enough food for an army out of here. So let's go back and let's start cooking. Let's get cooking with Nanny Bubby, as we say. So tomorrow we've got, um, so you know what? I did something today that I haven't done in almost a year as I had lunch with a girlfriend. So instead of just being in a little t-shirt and a pair of Lulus, I'm actually in a dress today. And I just got home in time to do this, but I set up before I left. And um, I'm very excited. I'm very excited to be here. So let's take the chard out of the refrigerator. So who's joining us right now? Can you tell me, Megan? Um, Teresa Anderson. Hey, Teresa. Hi. Hey, Susan Thomas, my student from yesterday. I miss you already, Susan. I wish we were cooking together already. Who else is here? Um, Ellen. Hey, Ellen. That's it today? That show up anyway. We always have more. So what I did is yesterday when we took everything out of, let me turn this up. When we took everything out of the garden, especially the chard, this will heat up very quickly. Let me take my sunglasses off because I don't need them out here. Look at this radish. Can you see that better even now out of the garden? That is just, and these radish leaves, if you make morning smoothies and you put spinach in your smoothie, radish leaves are a great substitute, especially when you pull them right out of the garden like that. So just want to say that. We also have Andrea. Andrea, Andrea Atabashi, right? Yes. Hey, Andrea, how are you? Okay, thanks for being here. Now, I just wanted to ask Andrea and Teresa and also Laura Grau, if you got the, um, so if you got the recipes I posted in Gather and I tagged all of you because you asked for those three recipes between the three of you. And so give me a thumbs up, you three, Laura and Andrea and Teresa, if you got those recipes yesterday because I did post them for you. So I'm cutting out the ouch, cutting out the ribs on these chard, which I did on this entire bag of chard last night. And I am going to just give these a quick rinse. Now the thing about chard is that I am told if you take chard and you flash uh, boil it, if that's the word, and I think it is, you flash boil it and bring it out. When you saute it, it holds its its uh, quality. It doesn't shrink down. I think we've talked about that before. But today, what I'm thinking, I'm going to try to do, and I might completely and totally, like, I'm just inventing this as I go because I was just curious to see how it went. Here, let me rinse this because we just took it out of the garden. Okay. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. Oh, so don't you know this was boiling before we walked over to the garden and I turned it down and now it's not boiling. So here we go. So what I want to do is I'm going to use the chard to roll the, what I would usually make for, as turkey wraps, turkey lettuce wraps, which is the ground turkey with onion and mushrooms and peppers and, um, and I'm going to use the chard to roll them like we did cabbage rolls. And then I'm thinking about putting a tomato sauce on it. So I don't know. I'm going to actually ask all of you for help. So this is called Mama Letizia's. Isn't that funny? Mama Letizia's spicy Italian marinara spelled correctly because usually Letizia is spelled L-E-T-I-C-I-A. But in this case, it was I-Z-I-A. And I got this as a holiday gift from my daughter's mother-in-law, which I loved. So we're going to try this. So let's see. I'll let you know if this was a good recipe or a not so good recipe. This isn't really boiling, but maybe it doesn't need to roll and boil. Okay, here we go. So into the pot. And I'm going to do these in batches so that they don't 
There we go. Wow. Okay. And just for a few minutes, we're going to roll them around until they get really bright green, which they already have. Look at that. And we're just going to take them out. And I have this beautiful strainer here. And that is just enough to soften them so that we can roll them. So, and also they'll be able to cool. So anybody else joined us yet? Um, Brenda? Hey, Brenda. This is actually Brenda's hack, believe it or not, is a way to keep this chard from sauteing up into such big, um, into small, like I, as you've all heard me say, I took out nearly an entire garden of chard and it, uh, I sauteed it up and it was like a quarter size after it was sauteed. So this apparently keeps it from, keeps that from happening. Okay, the gas is way in my face. It's very hot. Here's Stacy as well. Stacy who? Stacy Cullen. Oh, hey, Stacy. Nice to see you. Great to have you guys here. Okay, so into the pot with some more, another batch of the chard. Okay. So my outdoor kitchen is being demoed tomorrow. Oh my God, did you hear me right? Did I say it's being demoed tomorrow? Yes, I did. The outdoor garden is being demoed tomorrow. Not the garden, but the outdoor kitchen is being demoed tomorrow. Uh, there was a huge problem with this countertop. And for as much as I decided I was gonna live with it and call this my Wabi Sabi countertop, um, I found out that I just can't. And so the um, night and day restoration uh, stone, night and day stone restoration company is coming tomorrow to demo out the countertop and to install it properly because it was not properly installed and give me a brand new countertop. So it's going to take about 10 days. And so that's why I'm out here today is because I wanted one last time to use the outdoor kitchen before they come tomorrow to demo it. So these turned really nice and beautiful green. Look at these. Look at that. And let me just do that. So I have been through 15 months and seven contractors, and I'm, I thought I was done, but I'm not done. So once we get this counter and the kitchen all put back together, I think I'm going to have a party for my gatherers, just like we're going to cook something out here fun and terrific, and we'll all, you know, I'm going to let you guys design the menu, I think. <laughs> And I'll come out here and do it. So speaking of Susan Thomas, we had such a great day yesterday. Um, I loved every minute of it so much. I just absolutely loved it. We had such a blast. And, you know, we learned equal things from each other. I don't profess to know everything. I just want to sh show you the difference of this green as it went in and the green from this. So you see a big difference in green color. That's how you know when they're done. And these are holding, so, and this water wasn't boiling too much. So anybody who um, wants to consider booking a VIP session with me for Cooking Confidence Coach Cooking Together, it's about a six-hour one-on-one course. We can break it up in two-hour pieces. We do about one recipe every hour, which works out good. Depends on how complicated. So making ricotta cheese on its own was, you know, a 25 to 30 minute. Really, it was 10 minutes of making it and 35 to 45 minutes of letting it rest before it became cheese. Uh, so, but while that was cooking, we made other things. We started with the gnocchi. And that took about an hour. So um, we do probably on a six-hour course about six different recipes. And it just depends what you want. So for Susan, Susan does a lot of entertaining. And Susan is a great cook. You can find her at Making a Home with Susie. But it seemed as though appetizers might be, you know, where she wanted to expand her knowledge. And so that's why we started with um, the ricotta cheese and the gnocchi, which is more than an appetizer, but 
Um, these were things that she always wanted to learn how to make, and it just so happened that I made them. So we're going to turn this off so I don't forget, and we're going to come over here. At some point, we are going to come. Thank you. So I've got, thank you, Megan, so much. Oh, there it is down in the corner. Thank you. I would have scrolled and scrolled and scrolled. Thank you so much. Okay, so let me see who's here. Um, okay, and share. Oh, share to the, did you already share to the group? Um, it's in there. I'll share right now. You had asked if you wanted to, so I said yes. Okay, so let's, um, let me see who's, okay. So hi again, Cynthia Berman. Oh, now it's streaming better when you are close to your house. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I get that. Love your kitchen, what now, the countertop. Um, it's just my internet. Is it my internet or I don't know. I can't tell you, hey Marla. And there we go, okay, so we're off. And we are going to start cooking. Uh, let me get the meat out of the refrigerator. So if you just joined us, I'm dressed up because I went out and met a girlfriend for lunch. A girlfriend I've known since she was 19 and I was 21. And so it's really very fun to uh, have gone out once again, lacking COVID, um, to see everybody out in a restaurant where the restaurant is full and people are enjoying themselves and it's such a great, great thing to do that. So let me do this and again, and just a way that we can dice an onion because it's already, it grows partly sliced, if you will. Ah, losing my grip here. I think because my hands are sweating. <laughs> Because it is hot out here. It's funny because in the morning, it's been so beautiful. So let's fire up the pot here. I love this pot. My daughter wanted to know why a yellow pot. But I said, you know, it looks so beautiful on camera. And that's why I got it is because it, it, it has so much bright, vibrant color. So let's put some oil into the pot as we start to sweat our onions, right? So we, that's my favorite thing. Has Megan ever heard me say that? I love to sweat the onions. I don't know why, but I get the biggest kick out of that. Okay, so let's see who else is here. Newest comments. Um, nope, nobody knew. Okay, all right. So into the pot. Go. Let's let that oil get a little bit hotter. I thought it was hotter than it is. So we'll back up a minute. Let's finish slicing this onion. There we go. And then this way. There we go. You know, the, the funny thing is, I will tell you this, is that I, um, I used to always cry when cutting onions as a kid. And recently, I was cutting onions and I thought, boy, onions are so different than they were when I was growing up because I, I used to always start crying from the fumes of the onion. I don't know if any of you do that. Maybe you do still. But I thought, I just, I wonder why. And I thought, well, maybe I outgrew it. I didn't know. And then one Sunday, when I was wearing my eyeglasses rather than my contacts, I started to cry and I realized that chopping onions is a great thing if you wear contacts because it protects the eye from the fumes of the onion. So there's a hack for you in the event that you suffer from that. If you wear contacts, it will not happen. They protect your eye. So I love that. Okay, into the pot with the chopped onions. There we go. Okay, now next, I'm just going to chop up the garlic, but it's going to be the last thing I put in because you don't want your garlic to burn. All right, we'll just set it to the side of the chopping board. I do not chop correctly, I can tell you that. Do not watch the way I chop. Um, I've seen professional chefs do it so much better. And they're amazing, but I just do it the way that holding a knife feels comfortable to me. I know there's all types of classes that you can take, 
But boy, I'll tell you that all those techniques, which I've watched YouTube over and over and over again, it's just, it, it just, it's lost on me. I just, when I hold the knife the way I'm told, it just doesn't feel comfortable. And I've heard it said, when holding a knife or a gun, if it doesn't feel comfortable, hold it the way that is most comfortable for you. So there we go. Not that I use a knife as a weapon. Okay, so there's the garlic. Now let's talk about peppers. I love the pepper that's on my shirt. Let's talk about these peppers. So you will see, this is a fable, but I've heard, I believe it to be true. If you take a look at this pepper, there are three humps, one, two, three. Three humped peppers are males. Yes, there are male and female peppers, believe it or not. Now they say, Google does anyway, that it's a fable, but this is how you tell the difference. The females have four humps. And so if you look at this one, you can tell an extra bump because it would come around where a rib is and you can feel that there is a rib right here. So you've got one, two, three, four right here. So this is a female pepper and female peppers are supposed to be much sweeter. So I, I'll test them if you'd like. Let's see, let's cut them open here and see if I can taste a difference. I love to test every once in a while and I thought to my, oh, I forgot my compost bin. Just set that there. Um, let's just take this and I'll cut off a piece right here to taste. Then we'll do the male pepper. See how that is. So what we're doing is we are burning the onions. <laughs> That's what we're doing. Turn that down. Add just it's caramelizing. We'll add a little more olive oil. And we're going to add a little bit of salt, which I didn't do because that's how we sweat the, the onions here. There we go. Okay, do we have any new comments? No, no comments. Okay, all right. So what Brenda. do you guys, what? Brenda. Oh, Brenda, what'd she say? Okay, all right. There we go. So let's go ahead and keep chopping these. Let's get into them. Just a rough chop is good. It's all going to go in as just part of the, I don't know, sometimes I call it a mishmash, which is cool, right? It just, it's a, like a ground turkey stir fry with peppers, onions, garlic. Um, yep. Hi, Lisa Dell. Nice to see you. Thank you for being here. I hope your niece and nephews are doing great. Okay, we're talking, we were talking about female and male peppers. So here we go. So here we go, just a nice rough chop. You know, sometimes I think I should chop ahead, but then I think that there's techniques involved that I show that maybe you might not have seen me do before that maybe you can get value out of watching that. And maybe not, maybe you see me do it a hundred times and you're kind of bored with it, but I'm always hopeful that whatever information I'm sharing, that it has value for you. And so there's that. Okay. So this is the male pepper going in or the female. I can't remember which one this was. Let me take a look and I'll tell you. Why did you choose red peppers versus green? I don't like green peppers. Do you know who asked that? Teresa. Oh, Teresa. I don't like green peppers. I, they, they repeat on me. And I don't like that. Okay, so this is the male. So let's do this. Let's do a test. Um, isn't that kind of a clever way to say they make me burp and I don't like it? <laughs> they repeat on me. <laughs> okay, so here is um, the female pepper. Mm. That's good. Now let's see if I can feel or taste a difference with the male pepper. Yes, the male pepper has a raw, more, almost more green pepper taste to it. And the female pepper definitely has a sweeter taste. It really does. I love that. Okay, 
Not that you would ever notice if you were just eating raw peppers as a little snack, but it definitely tasted a difference. So there you go. So what do you guys think? If I roll these in the chard and roll it like we did the cabbage rolls, I feel like um, then I would put on tomato sauce. What do you guys think about the tomato sauce idea? And bake it in the tomato sauce. Andrea said, I always learn things from you. I don't like green peppers either. I always use the colors. Yeah, colors are so much sweeter and easier. Although I have to say there's something about a yellow pepper that sometimes they taste good, and uh, or maybe it's the orange. But one of those, I think it's the orange actually, it, it just, it sometimes it can have the strangest flavor. I think it's the orange, okay. There we go. So I, I love that Megan has been here helping me. It would be very hard for me to be out in the garden without Megan holding the camera for me. It's just, that's a camera move that I just can't do on my own. I'm sure you guys understand that. So having Megan here like this has been just such a great experience for me. Also, I remember when I was off to college and already knowing what I wanted to do that when I got asked if I would intern or could intern and asked if I could intern, it really meant a lot to me. So I think it's always great to share the love and share the experience because we really want um, everybody, we wanna share what we know to those who are coming up and inheriting the world, right? Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so this is coming along nicely. If you just want to peek inside the, the pan, there you go. So lucky for me, Megan has had camera experience at Las Vegas Arts Academy, which is super. They train very well. So there we go. Last bits. And with this, we're going to go ahead and put in the garlic and just give it a stir for about a minute and then we're gonna start layering the meat in. We're gonna give it a good seasoning and then I'm gonna to attempt to roll it. Can you imagine? I have no idea where this recipe popped up. It just popped up in my head. Sometimes that happens. I knew I had the chard. Uh, we harvested it yesterday and I just really wanted to use it, but I, you know, the, the only chard recipes um, that I can find that I've enjoyed, um, we've used a dozen times we've used them and I'm bored with using them. So, and you probably are too. You don't want to see me make rice cauliflower with chard. So, okay. Which I've done a million times. Even my husband and son don't want to see chard with rice cauliflower anymore. So, okay. All right. That is smelling great with the garlic in there. And so now that we can smell the garlic, that means it's done enough. And into the bowl with the turkey. Now there's two things that I am going to add to this before I start rolling. One is, let me get all these pieces into these for throwing away, because that was the only thing I forgot today was the compost basket these over here. So the last things we're going to put in are these heirloom tomatoes and these mushrooms, but I'm waiting till the end to do that because otherwise I'll cook down too much. So, okay. So do I dare say we're going to sweat the turkey? <laughs> but we are going to season it. So, and by the way, this is not white, white meat turkey. This is, uh, you know, ground dark turkey meat. And I prefer it because I believe that it's much more moist in any recipe, lettuce wraps or not. But if you hate dark meat, then use the white meat. You know, all of this is personal preference, but we are dark meat eaters in this household. So about two teaspoons of salt because the chard is a little bit, can be bitter. And so after we have boiled it, or flash, I don't know what you call that, flashed, um, flash boiled, I guess that's a word. Um, it, it probably loses a lot of its bitterness. The only other problem that I have with that chard is that that particular plant is already about 15 months old. 
and it's getting ready to die and you, you know that it is because it starts um, sprouting. Um, oh gosh, if Brenda's watching, she'll tell me the word. It's It starts, uh, can't think of that word, what it does, but it, it's, it puts out a stalk of uh, seeds. And it does that because it says, nature says to itself, I am getting ready to die. And before I leave the earth, I need to reproduce myself in this spot. And so it sends up a stalk of seeds and flowers and they dry and then they drop into the ground. And um, next thing you know, next year, suddenly I will have chard out there. Now, what's really interesting is right where those radishes are is where I planted the collard greens earlier in the year. And I pulled the collard greens out in late March because they were sprouting with their flowers, but they have started to grow again. So my farmer said, what is this plant? Do you know? And I looked at it and I said, that's a collard green plant. I don't know where it came from. He goes, well, was it planted here before? I go, yep, we pulled it out in March. So it's amazing to see how nature duplicates itself so that it is forever regrowing and regrowing and regrowing. And that same thing happened with a strawberry. So you saw the garbage scallions, which I sprouted in water and then um, put into the ground once we had roots. And now I have scallions everywhere there. But the same thing happened with the strawberry plant. So I had seen something on YouTube about how to cut off the top or to, or to take a straw. No, it's not the top. It's you slice a piece of the strawberry skin where all the little seeds are, and you just bury that into the soil, and it will sprout strawberries. Well, I did that last year inside one of, inside the sage, I think it was, in the pot before I built the garden, in the, in the pot with the sage. And it never sprouted, at least not last year. So I when I transplanted from the pot into that garden, I didn't see it had decomposed that piece of strawberry. And then suddenly this spring, I have a huge strawberry plant. And I'm like, where did that come from? I thought it was a weed. Then I asked the farmer and she said, that is a strawberry plant. I go, how did that happen? She goes, well, did you ever plant strawberries? No. Did you ever eat strawberries over by the garden? No. Then it dawned on me, no, but I tried to make a strawberry plant and I told her what I had done. And she goes, isn't that amazing? It took a year, but that strawberry has got a huge plant coming out. So, okay. So this is starting to cook down. You see that in the pot? Yep. Yeah. So Megan, next time I didn't think about it until we were starting, but if you have the tripod stick, it's easier and your hand doesn't get as tired. So sorry about that. We will remember that for the next time. Megan has caught on so quickly to everything that we do that I forget that she's only been here for a week, <laughs> which is awesome. Okay, so let's chop up the mushrooms. I don't think I'm going to use them all quite a bit. Use half of these. And the real fun starts when we start rolling. So we'll see how that turns out. It could be the worst idea on the planet, or it could be the best idea. In which case, I'm going to have to post the recipe, right? Okay. So Megan and I are definitely hot out here. <laughs> it's so much hotter out here than you would think because we're in the shade. We've got the fan on, but it's a good thing I'm in a light weight dress that I wore to my lunch date because um, I am boiling out here. I'm sure my face is sweating. Whoop. Okay. Get that out. All right. A little more salt never hurt anybody. We're also going to take about an eighth of a teaspoon, maybe, a, well, yeah, an eighth of a teaspoon of uh, chili pepper flakes. You know, more if you like it hotter, less if you don't like the heat. And we are going to take my very favorite seasoning of all on the planet, which is the smoked sweet paprika, and especially Williams Sonoma. So um, mm, you can smell the peppers. Let's see if I start coughing. The, the 
chili pepper flakes. That's how you know that you've got, that's how you know that they're almost ready to move off the fire as you start to cough a little bit. You have to be careful. I learned that from my new most favorite chef, Yotam Odolonghi. So, okay. All right. Let me stir this around. Let's throw the mushrooms in. And you know, I'm going to make a change. I am not going to cut up these tomatoes and put them in. I'm going to cut up the tomatoes and I'm going to put them around the rolls, should we be able to roll this, and, um, and then put the tomato sauce over the tomatoes because I like the idea of having the texture of real tomatoes and, um, and the tomato sauce. And I'm excited to try Mama Letitia's tomato sauce, so that will be fun. Okay, this is almost done. You can smell, oh, you can smell the sweet paprika. It's so fantastic. Okay. There we go. All right. It is ready. Let me just make sure all the meat is nice and ground, you know, nice and small pieces. We don't want any big chunks. Okay. All right. At this point, I'm going to turn it off. and put the top on for just a minute and let it steam itself. There we go. Okay, let's talk about how we are gonna roll. How are we gonna roll? Okay, let me, I need to use this. I need to use the spoon. And I think what we'll do is put this over here so you want an assembly line of what you do. So we want to take a piece of the chard, we want to roll it, and then we can put it right in here. So let's see if I can do as good with the chard as we did with the cabbage roll. So Megan, if I put this here, can you still see me? Will your arm like completely fall apart or you're good? You're good. Okay, so let's take our first leaf. This is a small one. Let's just open it up. There we go. So we cut the rib out, the vein. So we're just gonna pull it together like that. Look how beautiful and green this gets when you just flash um, boil it, <laughs> which is what we're doing. Okay, so we're not gonna use a teaspoon because that is just not enough. There we go, we'll use a wooden spoon. We'll just layer that in there like that, okay. Well, let's see how we do. Will this hold together to be rolled? It is. It's rolling. It's rolling. It's hot. There we go. We made it. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. I'm getting excited. <laughs> let's see. Let's see if we can find another one. It is good. So, late. they will just sort of glue these together with their own skin and the moisture. Put one right over the top. That's good. Okay. So I think I had a good idea here. What do you guys think? Here we go. We're going to fold that over. So a lot of times, you know, you develop a technique as you go. So if you notice with this one, I use three separate leaves. Push that in there. Okay. Let's see what else have we got. Ah, I don't want to tear that one. See, these are small pieces. I'm just going to lay out here, see what this is. Okay. There's another large one. This is nice and long. Okay. Get our leftover pieces that fell out. So I can't see if anybody, Megan, is anybody making comments here? No, nobody making comments. So what do you guys think? Just asking about do you like the idea of the tomato sauce? I didn't know what else to bake these in. So anybody have comments or anybody have um, suggestions? This one rolled up beautifully. Look at that. Awesome. Oh my gosh. This is amazing. Okay. Here's another one. Let's see if we, why am I so excited? Like, is it normal that you get this excited over stuff like this? <laughs> But I am for sure. Okay, let me get that one there.
I think I'm going to spread this and put this one down the middle to kind of glue it together. There we go. And I think the biggest mistake that I've made here is that I really need a slotted spoon because you don't want the juices in here because it keeps it from holding together as best as you can. Folding over and then rolling. Oh my gosh. How beautiful is that? Okay, what else have we got? There we go. So as I mentioned, tomorrow they are coming to demo my outdoor kitchen to, because the countertop was an epic fail and I thought I could live with it and I wanted to live with it um, just because I didn't want to have to go through. I thought we were done with the construction and I didn't want to have to go through any more men in the house and you know oh my god i just was dreading the barbecue coming out and then sitting in the middle of my new beautiful patio but at the end of the day keeping it as it was um actually is a is a danger and a hazard um so because of some things that were done that should not have been done that way so as a result um I am biting the bullet and we are getting ready for demo tomorrow. So that is what we're going to be doing. So I'm just piecing these together. And so once we have it finished, we will come out here and cook something fabulous. Okay, so here's an, anybody talking about what kind of sauce to put over the top of this? Anybody? No. No. Goodness. You sure? My goodness, girls, guys and girls. On the live, we have Teresa, Lisa, Cynthia, Andrea. Andrea, okay. Andrea, sorry. And then we have others because we have, um, you know, it shows many who else who have come. Let me turn this. So I don't know if I've told all of you, so I'm just making conversation here. So it would be really nice if you make conversation back with me. So take a look at this. Do you see this painting? This artist um, I am very, very friendly with, very friendly, and uh, she's part of our Savvy Six, and she did that painting as part of a paint night, and I fell in love with colors, and so she is actually painting me that exact same painting in a 36 by 48 inch painting that's gonna go on the wall, and if you saw the, the pillows that are now here, so my pillows that are on my patio are this color. So you can see that this sort of brings the outside in and the inside out. Um, and so at some point, she's about, I don't know how far through the painting she actually is. I've seen it, but I don't understand painting well enough to know how much farther she has to go. But I see it shaping up every Sunday, which is very exciting. To watch the evolution. Lisa said, I got distracted at work. Cynthia she got what? Distracted at work. Uh huh. Cynthia said she's still here. Okay. Lisa said, How do you get your tulips to stay up? Um, well, these were very tightly uh, put together, very tightly. You know, they were like very well sealed. And the key to keeping tulips from smelling to high heaven is to put a quarter size amount of Clorox in the water and that will keep them strong it'll keep them from wilting and it'll keep them from getting that smelly mold smell so that is a hack for tulips which I learned from Ina Garden but I, I had heard it um, from my son's bar mitzvah actually the florist that did his bar mitzvah put a little bit of Clorox in all the flowers for the party, but I found when I just put Clorox in all my flowers, it actually drained the color out of them. So I had like red roses and I put a little bit of Clorox in it and suddenly they became white roses, which I thought was really interesting because they're, they were drinking up the Clorox, but the tulips really don't drink up much water. You know, you need very little water in your tulips. And so as a result of that, they don't drink up the water and they don't turn color. But boy, those roses drank up the water. And let me tell you, that was like 
<laughs> like what happened to my roses? Okay, so I'm sort of gluing these together. Okay. Andrea says, sometimes I use smashed garlic lemon juice and dried mint with stuffed cabbage. It might be good with the char too. It might be good with a what? Char too. Oh yeah. Okay, so lemon juice and mint. Dried mint and smashed garlic. Okay, well there is garlic in here. And the dried mint, I think would, I, you know, I think the mint put on top of this instead of basil or parsley might really give it a great flavor. So I'm going to do that. I'm absolutely going to do that. I love that idea, Andrea. Okay. Cynthia is still there. Cynthia, how is your garden coming? I saw your tour of your garden and it looked amazing. So how, tell us how your garden, what is, what is blooming? What do you have blooming in your garbage garden? So Cynthia, aside from the fact that I had seen all about a garbage garden on uh, YouTube, someone had sent it to me, but when I got to Cynthia's house last summer, she literally had a garbage garden. She had scallions, she had garlic, she had, um, oh my gosh, I don't know what else you had. What else did you have in that garbage garden, Cynthia? So because Megan is holding the phone, that's why I'm not talking directly to everybody because I can't actually see who's here. Um, so it feels, it even feels different to me because I love seeing you guys and love seeing you all here. Cynthia said, I need a local mentor for my garden. So the name of the organization that I am working with, Cynthia, is called Garden Farms of Nevada. And they have a garden farms in Northern California. And they may have a garden farms down by you. And this is what I would suggest, Cynthia, is that if you uh, call Garden Farms of Nevada, or you can even email them and tell them that you live in the Temecula area and ask them who they might recommend for the same service, and you could mention my name, um, they very likely this one's falling apart they very likely will be able to help you so what do you think about that it's garden farms of nevada she also said green onions and ginger yeah oh the ginger i remember the ginger okay that was an epic fail that one fell apart but you know once they get rolled and in the pan here um okay so let's see what i've got left so i'm telling you all of this chard once put into a saute pan and saute down, ends up this size. I mean, I remember the very first time I harvested the chard, it must have been a pound and a half of chard. Like it was the entire level of my basket over here. It was like heaping over that. I could barely carry it in the house. And I chopped it up and I was so excited and I sauteed it down. And you really have to know my husband's sense of humor. And he saw all the chart and go, are you excited? We're going to be eating this for dinner. And when I brought it to him, I kid you not, it had gone down to about that much. He goes, where's the rest of it? I go, that's it. That's once it cooked down. So sauteing chard is okay if you flash boil it like I did. Then for some reason, just having that extra water in it keeps it from uh, going into the, you know, like, like spinach. So here, Cynthia said there's a Fallbrook garden group I need to reach out to. Yeah, that sounds fun. Fallbrook. So yeah, Cynthia lives in and Fallbrook. She said I have a garbage carrots, green onions, and garlic this year. Ginger didn't grow. I think I planted too early. Oh, yeah. Well, I, and I don't know if ginger is a more tropical environment. What do you know about ginger, Cynthia? And Lisa said, I'm so late to the party. I don't even know what you're making. Oh, okay. All right. Well, there's no late to the party because I always like to go back over it. So we started out in the garden. And um, now uh, then we, I, sh I took everyone on a tour of the garden. So you can check back in when we're done and just take a look at that, Lisa. You won't believe it. And then um, what I'm making now is I usually make lettuce wraps with ground turkey. But we harvested the chard yesterday. And I just thought to myself, I wonder if I could do a combination of lettuce wraps and cabbage rolls. So that's what I'm doing. I flash boiled the chard. 
and um, so and it, it turns so beautiful. Look at how beautiful and green it is. The chart, which is already the rainbow chart, which is already beautiful, but it's more of a uh, not so much of a Kelly green, but it's more of a forest green. The minute it hit the water, just like green beans, they turn bright Kelly green. And um, that's how I knew when to take them out. And now I'm just rolling them with what I normally put in lettuce wraps. And um, just because I wanted to use my chard, but I, I just, I make chard the same way. I, there's two ways I make chard. And so I thought to myself, how can I make this chard different? And I don't know, somewhere in a meditation, I got the answer. <laughs> oh my God. So I think this is a good idea. And then what I'm going to do, and I have to show those that are late to the party, like Lisa, my daughter's mother-in-law gave me this pasta sauce for the holidays. And it says Mama Letizia's with Letizia spelled correctly pasta sauce right and so i'm gonna pour this pasta sauce right over these rolls can you see the rolls really good perfect perfect okay look how nicely this one now this one rolled up beautifully beautifully okay we're almost done everybody then i'm going to cut up the sliced tomatoes we're going to use my very favorite kitchen hack tool which is that tomato slicer and oh, let's see, there's got to be a big one somewhere. Here we go. Where can I put this? Hmm. Okay, look at how beautiful that pink vein is. I think I like rainbow chart because it's pink. You know, I grew up in a pink house, so I love anything pink. My sister too. Yep, the carpets were pink, the draperies were pink. The walls were pink. <laughs> the stone in the house was rose quartz, which I can't even imagine. Here, let me taste that. Mm. Mm. This makes the best anything. And the red pepper. Okay, we're getting down to the end here. So let's lay all this out. And look how much water drained off of these. So it's very good that we used this to drain it. So that way they weren't too wet because I think they would have continued to compress had I not had something to drain them on. So there's a little hint should you want to do this yourself. You know, during the shutdown, I walked into Whole Foods when we first got shut down in like late February, right before um, the actual shutdown. And people were hoarding toilet paper and they were hoarding all kinds of things. Um, in the store and I just, I couldn't bring myself to do it. I just thought I, I can't do this. I'm not going to do this. I need to be a good neighbor and hopefully there's going to be people that'll be a good neighbor to me. I'm not going to go in and hoard anything. So I told my husband, I said, I am going to go to Whole Foods an hour before they close and I am going to see what people aren't buying and Whatever it is they're not buying, I am going to buy it and I will figure out a way to make it fantastic. And so at seven o'clock at night, this is before they started closing Whole Foods, at seven o'clock at night, I walked into the produce department and God bless Fernando, my produce manager at Whole Foods. You could tell people, had, you know, it, it would have looked like a fire sale at, at Walmart during Christmas, right? Everything spread all over the, the planet, you know, but the produce guys kept that produce department really tidy. So when I walked in and looked, literally everything was barren. It was clean. It was organized, but it was barren and sitting up on the shelf was the only thing that was left, which was this beautiful rainbow chard, just sitting up there. And when I walked in and looked at it, it looked as though it was smiling right at me. And I looked at it and said, I see you rainbow chard. You and I are going to have a great spring together if this hoarding keeps up. And uh, I bought some and then I grew some and um, that is the most I remember about what I found that day. And it was actually a comforting feeling because I went after everything had been picked through and all the hoarding was over for the day. And I thought I could probably bring home rainbow chard and collard greens. And so that 
comforted me during that time. Okay, here we go. Andrea said that she remembers your pink house. Oh, she does. I know she does. And so does Lisa, I'm sure. <laughs> so you guys both know why I love pink, right? Oh, my God. Who could grow up in a pink house? Okay. There we go. There is maybe the last one. Let me do. So everybody says to me, who do you make all this food for? This is, this is taking a long time, and I apologize, guys, because um, I'm sure you have better things to do. But i got to take my time. That was one of the things I learned yesterday with Susan Thomas during our cooking class, is that taking the time to do things actually and being in the present moment really makes a difference in how your food tastes. It really does. And I really enjoyed cooking with Susan yesterday. Um, as I said, she was my very first cooking confidence coach student. And, you know, just as with everybody, you learn as much from your students as you do as they do from you. Anybody will tell you that. Anybody will tell you that because your students do know things and they share those things. And then your students ask questions in a way nobody previously has. And it gives you the opportunity to think through the problem and give it an answer. And I love that. I love problem solving. And I love having to come up with answers to things. And either my answers are right or wrong. But regardless, it's a fun process. So I can't thank Susan enough for the day. It was five hours Five hours we cooked together. Can you imagine? Okay, this one may fall apart because this is just nothing but pieces pieced together. Probably should put less in there. Okay, ready? Let's see if this one holds. May not. <laughs> yep, somehow I made it work. It's really not held together. This is holding it together. Okay, so this is what we're going to do next. Put this back in the bowl. We'll give that those extras to whomever might want it. So the reason I cook so much every day is that my husband is a really big eater, and I cook really, really healthy, and my son is a big eater. So believe it or not, this will serve the three of us, but they, as you know, have started working from home. We built an office upstairs, and they work from home every day. So we not only are having dinner tonight, but we're likely to all have lunch tomorrow. So that's why I make so much, because this, this will get two meals for three people. So, okay. I just think this is going to look so pretty. We're, of course, my favorite kitchen hack, which I sent to Susan Thomas, we used yesterday. Get the seeds and the water out. There we go. All sliced. Megan, is this the first time you're seeing these? Yes, so cool. Isn't that the coolest thing ever? I know. Everybody loves this. It's my very favorite kitchen tool. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take Andy's idea of fresh mint to sprinkle at the end. I know she used dry, dried mint, but I'm going to use fresh because that's what I have. I don't have any dried, although I could dry my own, I'm sure. And um, I will sprinkle some fresh tomatoes. There we go. And really, this everything in this is cooked, so we don't have to cook it for too long. We'll just bring it to a boil, the sauce. There we go. How's that? Beautiful. Oh, my gosh. We have to take a beauty shot of that. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to open up Mama Letizia's <laughs> pasta sauce. And I can't. Ah. You hear that pop? There we go. Okay. Let me smell it. Mm, delish. And this has got a little bit of a spice to it. We're just going to spread this around. Look at that. There we go. Oh, wow, that really has some spice. Okay. That's it. Into the oven about, let's call it 375 for maybe about 20 to 25 minutes. We just are going to want 
this to come to a boil underneath all of this, all the juices to melt together and onto the table with some salad. I've got a ton of romaine still in the fridge from Mother's Day and I'm excited. And the radish, we're gonna make those radishes. I might pick a few more and put some radishes in that salad. So that's it for today. I love this. I think I'm so excited about it. And I mean, I hope it tastes good. <laughs> Who knows? But how could it be bad? I've tasted the meat. The meat is good. The chard looks beautiful. And the Mama Letizia's pasta sauce looks great too. So hopefully all of that together will be great. So thank you so much for joining me today. Remember tomorrow, Don Hamrick is here from Chapman Automotive. He tells a very inspiring story of coming here from Morocco. So he came from Morocco to Georgia. So he's got a Southern Georgia accent from Morocco and came here to Las Vegas and has been a big giver to this community for many, many years. So we're gonna really enjoy talking with him tomorrow. And then on Friday, we are doing Mahamara on KLAS. So if you join in live at Channel 8, and I'm hoping to go ahead and be able to stream it on the iPad so you guys can have a quick peek at it um, as we're streaming live on Channel 8. And I love doing that. We just ran out of time and couldn't get it done because of technical issues last uh, Friday when we were on Channel 8. So that's it. That's it, everybody. So great to see you. Um, thank you for being here every day. You make my day. You make my purpose valuable, very valuable to me. So thank you so much on the count of three. One, two, three. Go out and spread love like butter.